good evening students the other day we finished algae and the life cycles of pyrogaira ramidomonas today we will start the next branch that is fungi this fungi meaning in greek language is mushroom so previously they called all uh, fungi as mushrooms but the word fungi is coined by casper bohin the study of fungi is known as mycology or mycetology mycology or mycetology fungi or ye chlorophyllous because there is no chlorophyll since there is no chlorophyll they are not autotrophs they depend upon other organisms so that is heterotrophic talophytes so that is the definition of fungi fungi or a chlorophyllous heterotrophic talophytes P A Michelli considered as the father of mycology because he studied a large number of fungi. D Berry was considered as the father of modern mycology and plant pathology. Pathology is a subtopic under the fungi that is the study of plant diseases. study of plant diseases is known as pathology here plant pathology deberry studied many diseases of plants and is considered as the father of modern mycology and plant pathology ej e. butler was considered as the father of indian mycology and plant pathology is a indian he studied many species of fungi and he was considered as the father of indian mycology and plant pathology so next famous indian mycologists e j butler dastur munkar k c mehta a g mukherjee h b choudhary Yes, Sadha Sivam. These are considered as famous Indian mycologists. Regarding the history of fungi, I told you already that Michelli, 1729, wrote a book by name Nova Plantarum, the Plantarum Genera. He described many species of fungi. so he considered as the father of mycology linnaeus 1753 in his species plantarum he included the fungi also next p s ecardo between 1882 to 1931 wrote 25 volumes of book that is silloch fungorum and described nearly 8000 species of fungi de berry 1865 described the life history of a heterocious stem rust example paxinia graminis heterocious means generally a parasitic plant live on a host and completes its life cycle that is called artaceous whereas this paxinia graminis plant needs two plants to or two hosts to complete its life cycle so that is called artaceous stem rust one plant is called the wheat plant another is the barberry plant so to complete its life cycle the paxinia graminis needs two hosts Regarding this history, Blaxley, Blaxley, 
1904 described the phenomenon of heterothelism in mucorails mucorails is an order name under which we have rhizopus and mucor where he studied that two different hyphae of different strains come in contact during the reproduction so that is heterothelism different thallae meeting different thallae that is heterothelism next alexander fleming 1929 discovered the penicillin from the penicillium notatum and held a nobel prize in 1945 so i think you know the discovery of penicillin it is a, a unexpected discovery not actually alexander fleming wants to identify or discover penicillin once unexpectedly the culture is contaminated with penicillin fungus and from which he prepared a, the penicillin it became a wonder drug during the second world war for which he got a nobel prize in 1945 Beadle and Tatum 1941 studied neurospora and proposed one gene one enzyme hypothesis neurospora is an ascomycetes fungus and he studied the physiological effects of this genes i think you know gene is nothing but a, a part of this nucleotide a part of dna dna is made up of number of nucleotides so one particular gene is absent a particular enzyme is not created in its body a particular enzyme is not created a particular biological activity is not done so that completely failure of this biological pathways so he those he both beadel and tatum studied the one gene one enzyme hypothesis and earned the nobel prize the next regarding the general characters of fungi most of the fungi are moisture loving wherever you can have a little moisture there you can find fungus and uh, terrestrial that is on the land very few species are aquatic that you can find in water example monobleferes and saprolegnia are water fungi this saprolegnia is also known as the water mold since they do not have the chlorophyll they are heterotrophic or they all heterotrophs the cell wall is made up of fungus cellulose or it is called the chitin the reserved material is in the form of glycogen sex organs are unicellular and non jocketed this is a common for both algae and fungi there also you don't find any outer jocket for the sex organs and another similar character to algae is no embryo is formed after gametic union after the gametic union a zygote is formed zygote takes some rest and undergoes reduction division and form the spores those spores again develop into that particular fungus so no embryo is formed they are non vascular they do not find the vascular tissue like xylem and phloem and uh, there is a reduction in sexuality from phycomycetes to deuteromycetes so these are all classes we will discuss in the classification phycomycetes the first group in you mycotina that is a true fungi to to deuteromycetes this is the last group where there is no sexual reproduction only asexual reproduction so it is given there is a reduction in sexuality this is a very important thing reduction in sexuality from the primitive fungi to advanced fungi where sexual reproduction is completely absent so they are called imperfect fungi the deuteromycetes also called imperfect fungi regarding the thallus organization the thallus ranges from 
यूनिशिलिला टू हाईली ब्रांच्ड टूडो पेरेंकाइमेटस टाइप इन स्लाइम मोल्ड्स दर इज यू कैन फाइंड मिक्सोमाइकोटिना ग्रुप द प्लांट बॉडी इज फ्री लिविंग प्लास्मोडियम नो सेल वॉल एंड इट इज मूविंग दैट इज प्लास्मोडियम दैट ग्रुप इज कॉल्ड मिक्सोमाइकोटिना दैट विल डिस्कस इन द क्लासिफिकेशन एंड द ट्रू फंगे दैट इज कॉल्ड यू माइकोटिना वेयर द थैलस इज ए माइसीलियम मेड अप ऑफ फाइन थ्रेड लाइक हाइफे यू हैपन टू सी द माइसीलियम there are hyphae a number of hyphae or highly twisted etc this is called mycelium and an individual thread like structure is known as hypha each individual one is called hypha some are unicellular some fungi are unicellular showing pseudo parenchymatous by budding we will discuss later this is a yeast cell by budding it give a chain of cells chain of cells so that is uh, actually this one is unicellular is this unicellular and showing pseudomycelium just like a mycelium not actually it is a mycelium it is a pseudomycelium by the budding next the hypha may be aseptic septa means the central wall the wall between the two cells uh, is called septa some are having no septa that is called aseptic some are having septa they may be having aseptic example rhizopus no septa there or septate you can find in agaricus aseptic multinucleate mycelium is called cenocytic that is a very important term cenocyte or cenocytic condition having many nuclei no cell wall cenocyte example rhizopus mucor and then the septate forms may be uninucleate So the septate forms may be uninucleate, having one nucleus, and sometimes you can find two nuclei. That is a, a binucleate condition. It is formed due to the fusion of two different hyphae, dicaryotic condition. If it is one nucleus, that is monokaryotic, two nuclei, dicaryotic condition. This dicaryotic condition found in the higher fungi, and monokaryotic nucleus you can find in lower fungi, and uh, both are found in agaricus. in agaricus both monokaryotic and dicaryotic mycelia are found so here you can find this is the yeast cell i told you already this budding etc from this cell only so here the entire mycelium is converted into a single reproductive structure that is called holocarpic condition carpa means fruit fruit means reproductive structure so Holocarpic means when the entire mycelium, because it is unicellular, the total mycelium, the unicell, become into a fruiting body. This is called holocarpic condition. Example: yeast. Next, another is called the eucarpic condition. The the whole plant body is modified into a single reproductive structure that is holocarpic. here the plant body a part of the plant body is modified into a fruiting body and a part becomes the vegetative structure so when a part of the mycelium is somatic or vegetative and the remaining part becomes reproductive it is called eucarpic condition that is eucarpic condition example this rhizopus so in this rhizopus you have these are the reproductive bodies and this is a vegetative structure this is called a stolon this is a normal vegetative part and this is also vegetative rhizoids and there you can find reproductive structure a part is reproductive a part is vegetative this is called a eucarpic condition again example rhizopus and another important thing monocentric and polycentric conditions when the eucarpic forms may be monocentric having a single sporangium so if it is gives a single sporangium or the whole plant body a single sporangium that is called monocentric and having many sporangia that is called polycentric polycentric and some specialized forms are found in fungi where A tissue-like structures are formed by the union of these hyphae. 
that is called plectin chyma. In higher fungi, the mycelium gets organized into loosely or compactly woven structure which looks like a tissue called plectin chyma. In higher fungi means ascomycetes and basidiomycetes, when they form into reproductive structures or uh, the fruiting bodies, the hyphae are woven and form into a tissue like structure that is called plectin chyma. This plectin chyma is of two types. One is called prosenchyma, another is called pseudoparenchyma. Prosenchyma, pseudoparenchyma. The prosenchyma, it is loosely woven hyphae lying almost parallel to each other. So, the hyphae are parallel to each other. So, here you can find these hyphae are parallel to each other. Number of hyphae are they are arranged parallelly. This is called a prosenchyma. And the second one, pseudoparenchyma. The hyphae are closely interwoven, looking like a parenchyma tissue. Parenchyma tissue in a cross section you can find, you can find all the cells are rounded cells. Here also you can find, this is not parenchyma, it is just like parenchyma that you can find in basidiomycetes. The prosenchyma you can find claviceps, this is ascomycetes fungus and this is a basidiomycetes where you can find pseudoparenchyma. Now you can see the slide. So this is pseudoparenchyma, in a transection it looks like a parenchyma, it is pseudoparenchyma and this is prosenchyma, you can find the hyphae are arranged parallelly, parallel to each other. Uh, regarding this uh, specialized forms, formations, under is rhizomorphs, rhizo means root. So, these hyphae are modified into roots are called rhizomorphs for absorption. These are uh, elongated, closely packed and interwoven root like hyphae, those are called rhizomorphs. Another specialized formation that is called sclerotia. Scleros means thick wall. Scleros means thick wall. Here, the hyphae gets interwoven and forming pseudoparenchymatous with external hyphae. With external hyphae becomes thick. So, here you can find the parenchyma cells are interwoven and outer cells protect the inner cells by having a thick wall that is called sclerotia. Here the hyphae gets interwoven forming pseudoparenchyma with external hyphae become thickened to save the inner ones from desiccation, from drying. They persist for several years and then they develop. Example, claviceps. This is sclerotia that is uh, having a thick wall around the hyphae for protection purpose. So, this, this is the formation of sclerotia. Sclerotia, mycelium is inside having a thick wall around it uh, and takes some resting stage. So, after uh, advent of this favorable conditions, it break uh, and it will develop into new mycelium. Regarding the specialized forms, another is called the stroma. It is a thick mattress of compact hyphae associated with the fruit bodies. So, inside the fruit bodies, you can find thick mattress of these tissue like forms are formed by the fungal hyphae. Example, erysiphae and pezyza. So, these two are uh, ascomatous members and they, pro they produce the fruit bodies. Inside the fruit bodies, you can find stroma. Next, regarding this, there are four types of root bodies found in fungi. They are apothecium, that is a bowl shaped structure, example pezyza, another root body perithecium, flask shaped structure, example claviceps, the third one clistothecium, it is a spherical and a closed one, whereas these two are open and this is closed one. You can see the photographs later. Example, Pencilium and Basidiocarp. 
it is a mushroom i think you know example agaricus so here you can find these three types one is a peritheium this is a flask shaped structure that you can find in claviceps another is a cleistothecia here you can find in a peritheium a flask shaped structure having an opening having an opening example claviceps in cleistothecium cleistos means closed cleisto means closed in the cleistothecium the fruit body is completely closed after the decay of this cleistothecium only the spores will come out so that is cleistothecium the third one is apothecium just like a complex structure open complex structure example pezaiza so these three types are found in uh, ascomycetes and basidiocarp is found in basidiomycetes basidiomycetes the ife may be septate without pores that is called solid septum are having many perforations that is called perforated septum if a septum is found in between it may be a solid or having perforations perforations that is called perforated septum or having a large pore in the center a large pore in the center that is ecomycetesian septum and a bordered pit like structure bordered pit that you can find in tracheids and vessels that is called a dolly pore septum that i will tell you as in basidiomycetes this septum is like this this is one cell this is another cell between you can find a which is called a border like structure or swelling appears this is a bordered this is called dolly pore septum and uh, the round structures these are called parenthosome this is called parenthosome and this is the swelling of the septum this type of dolipore septa are found in basidiomycetes next let us see the nutrition in fungi we know that there is no chloroplast the mode of nutrition may be heterotrophic and uh, it is of uh, three types the heterotrophic nutrition is of three types number 1 saprophytes or saprophytic nutrition they derive food from dead and decay materials the fungi which live on dung are called coprophilus fungi this is a new technical term coprophilus fungi among this saprophytic fungi a coprophilus fungi it lives on the dung example mucor pilobolus pilobolus we got the next one saprophytes and there are these fungi which live on annelids nematodes and rotifers they are called predaceous fungi that is coprophilus fungi here you have a new one that is called predaceous fungi these fungi produce the hyphae and kill the animals kill the animals and then the prophetic note that is dead and decay of the animals and in this way they live on the animals such fungi are called predaceous fungi example dactylaria and arthrobotrys there in the slide you remember you see the those are some which are called as nematodes nematodes are there in the soil the fungal hyphae the white color one are the fungal hyphae so they used to carry with the rings they produce and catch the in these animals and make them dead when they dead they carry this saprophytic nutrition regarding this examples dactylaria and arthrobotrys the next type of heterotrophic nutrition is symbiosis the symbiosis itself the two plants and animals live together and mutually benefited so this year the fungi having a symbiotic association with algae that association is known as lichen that we will discuss later 
separately regarding these lichens, types, uh, classification, etc. Uh, this is an association of algae and fungi. Then the second one, the fungi associated with uh, the roots of higher plants, higher plants that may be gymnosperms and angiosperms, that is known as mycorrhiza. So, myco means fungi, rhiza means rhizoids, rhizoid means root. So, association of fungal hyphae with the roots of higher plants is known as mycorrhiza. This mycorrhiza is of two types. So, that is the mycorrhiza may be on the surface of the root or the fungal hyphae may be enter inside the cells of the plant or higher plants. So, this ectotropic mycorrhiza, uh, this is wrong, don't follow this one, this is wrong. This ectotropic mycorrhiza, the fungal hyphae form as outer covering around the root. So, it is known as a sheathing mycorrhiza, that is the mycorrhiza found externally on outside the root of higher plant. The higher plant example may be pinus. So, in the roots of pinus, the ectotrophic mycorrhiza functions. The second one is uh, the endotrophic mycorrhiza. Endotrophic mycorrhiza. This endotrophic mycorrhiza, the fungal hyphae, endotrophic mycorrhiza, the fungal hyphae may enter into the cells of the roots of higher plants. Those higher plants are orchids. So, orchids are angiosperms and monocots. So, the here in this case, nectotrophic mycorrhiza, they are found on the outer surface, whereas here the hyphae enter into the host plant and forming a swollen vesicles or branched arbuscules. This fungus enter into the roots and produces vesicles or rounded vesicle path or branched arbuscules or swollen tree like structures, branches like structures are found. So, that is why they are called a vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza V A M that is vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza. Now, let us see the structures. So, here these are the vesicles, vesicles are nothing but rounded structures, rounded broader like structures, these are vesicles sometimes, sometimes what happen you see here a branch like structures, branches, branches, branches etc and found in a just a net like structure, these are called arbuscules. So, they produce vesicles, arbuscules, so vesicular, arbuscular, mycorrhiza. Uh, what is the benefit of this mycorrhiza? As I told you already, the mycorrhizal association is a symbiotic association. So, what is symbiosis? How it takes place? What is the relation between the host and the fungus? Mycorrhizal fungi not only help uh, in absorption of water, generally the mycorrhizal hyphae has more capacity to absorb water by the plants, but also help in the absorption of nutrients like uh, sulfur, nitrogen and phosphorus. That is an advantage. In turn, they get food material from the host plant. So, mutually benefited. The fungi gets food material from the host plant and the host plants because of this mycorrhiza, they have the water absorbing capacity and the nutrient absorbing capacity they have. The fungi which involve in mycorrhizal association or some examples are given regarding the fungus. And as I told you already, the fungus and the higher plants, higher plants are gymnosperms and angiosperms, monocots and dicots. And regarding the fungi, the examples are given here, just you follow the Rhizoctonia, Poma, Boletus, Tricholoma, Pelus, etc. are examples of some examples of fungi which are involved in the mycorrhizal association. The next is the heterotropic nutrition. The first one is saprophytic nutrition. Second one is 
symbiotic and third one parasitic nutrition so parasites that is the first one the saprophytes they live on dead and decay organisms never affect any plant and second one the mycorrhizal association plants and fungi but never affect fungi as by plants but here what happen the parasites they completely depend upon the plants and later soon they kill the hosts they obtain food material from living hosts they may be obligate parasites obligate parasite means it is a parasite is always he never changes mode of nutrition whatever the conditions may be that is obligate parasite example phytophthora these obligate parasites are also called biotrophs i told you beginning trophic means food levels and these get food only from the biological organism or living organism or living plants so these are called biotrophs example phytophthora this phytophthora infestens the plant causes late blight disease in potato plants and the second one fecal tetu parasites so basically they are saprophytes this is a, there is a logic in this words remember fecal tetu parasite means that is not a parasite that is a saprophyte so basically a saprophyte and sometimes what happen the saprophyte may convert it into parasite that is a fecal tetu parasite this type you can find in armillaria on plant fungus there you can find it is basically a saprophytic fungus and soon sometimes it will develop into a parasite after getting a suitable host plant regarding this absorption of food materials whether the fungus may be a ectoparasite or endoparasite they produce rhizoids to absorb food from food materials so they send rhizoid like structures into the host plant and absorb food some fungi produce a finger like ostoria or for absorbing the food materials so sometimes they absorb food materials directly from the hyphae itself from the hyphae itself it absorb food material or sometimes it produces a finger like ostoria for absorbing food materials to the host plants i will show that slide so here you can find here you can find the is a diagram is a, a bigger one where this is a host plant cell plant cell these are all uh, plant cells or host plant cells and this one is a fungus this is a fungus ip ipa it produces a finger like structures inside the cell inside the cell these are called ostorium singular ostoria plural they get food material from this host cell next we have the reproduction <laughs> regarding the reproduction it takes place in three methods first vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction so this is quite common that is a vegetative reproduction and by this the fungus produces more spores and they are liberated and infect the surrounding plants or food materials vegetative reproduction it takes place in the following methods number 1 fragmentation the ifa may break into pieces or small fragments and which are capable of developing into new hyphae accidentally the hyphae may be cut into pieces each piece will develop into a new fungus for example this is quite common in rhizopus mucor and alternaria by fragmentation the second one by budding as i told you already in the east the budding takes place forming a false mycelium or pseudo mycelium the parent cell gives buds in a chain like manner in a chain like manner and they may be removed they may be removed and develop into new plants example yeast so yeast cell 
developing a bed but the nuclei develops mitotically that is what is called by budding or by fission one cell becomes to two cells and then the cell becomes the one the first cell becomes the other and later another bud develops that will become second and then another bud develops that will become three in the same way chains of buds are developed and the developed one may be at the top it will be removed and develop into a new yeast cell the next one oidium in some mycelial forms the thallus breaks into pieces each piece rounds up into a structure called oidium so this is not a bud actually so they cut into pieces each piece is rounded up and form an oidium and it will develop into a new plant this type of uh, oidia are developed in rhizopus polybia and coprinus in those who can have this oidia so regarding the asexual reproduction it takes place in the following methods the first one by juice spores or moving spores or uh, these are the uh, uh, naked motile spores the juice spores also called naked motile spores so found in lower fungi where the flagella may be isoconch or heteroconch so that is may be having two flagella may be similar or dissimilar if it is similar both may be this viplas type or both may be the tinsel type or different types that's called heterocant one is smooth type that is viplas and there is tinsel type so this type of juice spore formation takes place in allomesis saprolegnia plasmodiophora in this we have the juice spore formation so okay so now next type sporangiospores so these are small spores or thin walled non motile spores formed inside the sporangium example this is a rhizopus in this rhizopus here there is a stalk like structure develops in the upper side that is called sporangiophore four means stalk p h o r e four means stalk sporangiophore at the tip a sporangium is formed inside the sporangium a number of sporangiospores are formed after complete maturation of this one breakdown of sporangial wall by this the columella helps and the spores are liberated out and they find a suitable substratum and develop into new rhizopus or mucor mycelia so this type of sporangial sporangiophores are non motile spores the next one conidiospores the first one is juice spores second one sporangiospores the third one juice spores this conidiospores conidiospores also non motile this non motile spores which are directly produced from the tips of the conidiospores this is a single hyphae is very lengthy hyphae it is a conidia bearing stalk so conidiospore there you can find sporangiophore here conidiophore conidiophore bears a rounded vesicular structure from this a number of conidia which are forms as a chains chains of conidia are formed and they may be removed and after finding finding a suitable substratum they develop into that particular fungi this type of conidia are formed in albugo aspergillus penicillium etc next we will go to the sexual reproduction in the sexual reproduction it involves the fusion of two gametes that is a common sexual reproduction is common that is the involvement of fusion of two gametes except in deuteromycetes i told you already this is fungi imperfect fungi there no sexual reproduction but remaining in all groups sexual reproduction is found the sexual reproduction the following are the methods isogamy anisogamy oogamy 
गैमिटांजल कॉपुलेशन गैमिटांजल कॉन्टैक्ट एंड स्पेरमेटाइजेशन सो दीज आर द मेथड्स ऑफ सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन दिस फर्स्ट मेथड वी विल सी द आइसोगमी यू नो ऑलरेडी देर यू कैन फाइंड द फ्यूशन बिटवीन द गैमिट्स विच आर मॉर्फोलॉजिकली सिमिलर बट फिजियोलॉजिकली डिसिमिलर such gametes such type of isogamy you can find in synchytrium synchytrium is the example of isogamy next anisogamy fusion takes place between morphologically and physiologically different gametes male gametes are smaller and active female gametes are larger and sluggish they move very slowly this type you can find in allomyces allomyces we got in the third one that is called oogamy where the fusion of ciliated active male gamete with a large passive female gamete this type is known as the oogamous type this you can find in phytophthora the three types isogamy and anisogamy and oogamy you can see here the first one the fusion of similar gametes and the second one the anisogamy where one gamete is bigger one is smaller where both are having flagella whereas in the third type oogamy the male gamete is small and having flagella and female gamete that is ovum it is stationary not moving the fusion is known as oogamy the second one the third one sorry is the gametangel copulation gametangel copulation in this it involves the fusion of two gametangia fusion of two gametangia so for example in rhizopus and mucor the two filaments come together and they produce the outgrowths those outgrowths join and then a cell wall takes place at the apical side the lower one is a suspensor and upper one is a gametangium so two gametangia join the nucleus of these two join together and form a zygote that is called zygospore the zygospore secretes a very thick wall and takes a breast so now here the gametangia copulation two gametangia come together and fuse this is called a gametangial copulation this you can find in rhizopus and mucor next the gametangial contact gametangial contact so this is slightly different than the gametangial copulation there is in the gametangial copulation two gametangia come together but here what happen two gametangia from different thalli contact each other and then the male nuclei of one gametangium transferred into the female gametangium directly or through a tube this type of a uh, fusion is known as gametangial contact you, you can see the slide later example albugo so here you see it is a gametangial <coughs> contact where the female gamete here and another male gamete antheridium and male gamete from the antheridium enter into the female gamete and fusion contact takes place this type is known as gametangial contact the next one and uh, the last one regarding this uh, uh, sexual reproduction types spermatization the male gamete spermatium develops in spermogonium female gamete ascogonium female gamete ascogonium this female gametangium having a long neck female gametangium having a long neck the male gametangium that is spermatia is attached to the in this trichogyne and then the female gamete is stationary this male gamete sends a male gamete inside the trichogyne and fusion of this nucleus and that nucleus so that 
a single cell we have two nuclei that is called dikaryotization cell having two nuclei dikaryotization takes place uh, example in puccinia on the slide see here this one this is a somatic hyphae where you can find uh, this spermatium spermatium here and spermatia it is removed and attached to the trichogyne of the ascogonium this is ascogonium and the longest long uh, this is neck like structure this is called trichogyne so this spermatia is attached to the trichogyne and it sends its nucleus inside one and later they have two nuclei two nuclei that is dikaryotization is maintained so this is these are the ways of sexual reproduction in fungi so tomorrow we will take the classification and also the economic importance of fungus thank you